Getting Languages Easier to Learn by Artyom Chilpachenko. Language is not a genetic gift, it's a social gift. Learning a new language is becoming a member of the club, the community of speakers of that language. Frank Smith, Almaty, 2015. Preface. The book is intended for all those who wish to learn foreign languages, both independently and in courses. It contains the author's observations and expertise on the methods and ways of learning foreign languages. It describes the difficulties faced by any foreign language learner, both in groups and independently, and suggests ways to achieve the desired success. Challenges in language learning are most often represented by mastering spoken conversational skills and understanding the language, acquiring translational skills, and organizing the learning process as a whole. Being a third-year student of a linguistic college, studying three foreign languages, teaching courses, as well as observing teaching viewers of many lecturers and gaps in the education system, the author has developed effective methods of learning language and selecting teaching ads that help everyone to learn any language independently. The author warns that if you do not aim to learn a foreign language or learn it for the sake of brush off, then everything that will be described in this book will seem meaningless and incomprehensible to you. The book is structured into three main chapters, divided into defining problems, proposing solutions, and implying solutions in practice. The book aims to support beginners in language learning and to encourage them to become proficient in speaking skills. Advanced language learners will discover a wealth of tips on how to make their lessons productive and rewarding. Author. Chapter 1. Challenges in learning languages. Learn a language and you will avoid a war. Arab proverb. Memo to foreign language beginners. I would like to start my book with the features of a language that anyone who takes up the task of learning it should be aware of. They say that you have to have a talent for languages just as if you have a talent for math, physics and other exact sciences. I don't argue, it's not difficult to determine the talent for something, but to develop it they have to make an effort. Let there be a statement that languages, mathematics, chemistry and physics are not given to everyone. One should have a special gift, abilities, etc. Sometimes you can agree with it and sometimes you can disagree with it. But if you are forced to learn a language and you have never been successful in it before, I hope that after reading my book you will find it easier to learn languages, you will become interested in them and the ways to achieve perfection in all endeavors will open up. I still believe that if you are determined to learn a language, if you are confident and hardworking, everything I will share with you in this book will benefit you. Those who have already studied a foreign language, be it English, German or French, will certainly spend less effort and time and achieve the desired success. On the contrary, if you have already studied English in an educational institution or course, but you are not satisfied with the outcomes, you have a chance to make up for a lost time and it will not be so difficult. Well, for those who are studying their first language Well, for those who are studying their first foreign language from scratch and decided to take a course or a study individually and with a teacher, my book will serve you as a companion to achieve success. For those who take up language learning on their own, I suggest not to lose courage despite the psychological resistance and difficulties you may encounter. Remember, never give up and see it through to the end. There are times when you have neither desire nor time to learn a language. Don't force yourself to do it. Believe me, it won't do you any good. The fundamental principle of language learning is desire. Remember the saying, you can't force a favor. It's the same here. What you need is to sincerely want to learn a language, and then it will be all yours, and the process of learning it will become a pleasure. Starting a language, you as if mentally conclude an agreement with it. The learner undertakes to devote time to regular classes of the language. 
and at least once a week to speak it, while fulfilling the above obligations sincerely with the soul and with love, and in turn the language undertakes to give itself completely to the learner. Maybe the reader thinks to himself, now, what an absurd agreement, but just try to study the language with reluctance and neglect regularly, even forcibly, so to speak, and see how far you will advance. These seemingly ridiculous terms must be observed while learning a language, otherwise you will not learn it. If you are not satisfied with the above position, you will not learn the language, no matter how much you want to and no matter how hard you try. A vivid example of this is the students who decided to study to become translators. There were only 10 out of 100 students who wanted to learn the language and become true translators. They studied hard, always attended classes, passed all the exams perfectly, and it was those 10 who learned the language quite well and became specialists, while the rest just got certificates for box ticking and you can draw your conclusions. To learn a language is to have one more window from which to look at the world. Chinese proverb. Is it possible to learn languages on your own? The answer to this question I would like to start with a small excerpt from my autobiography and you will judge for yourself. I have never had the desire to learn foreign languages on my own. I always wanted to put my laziness on someone to teach me something, to chew everything up and put it in my mouth. Nothing to say in my 16, 19 years, I, as well as everyone my age, had a principle. They give me tasks, I do them. They tell me to learn, I learn it. Everything went its way. I was comfortably given knowledge and I acquired it until the education system cracked. It all started when I was in my second year of college. My French teacher left. The hours allocated for the second language were cut due to the crisis, and the French teacher was not found. I had no choice but to find out the phone number of my old teacher and take private tutoring with her. So I went to classes for a year, and during this time I learned not only the language but also the manner of teaching. A year passed, and then the summer internship started. I, as a successful student, was offered an internship in an international hotel, and this is where I learned my profession and determined what I should strive for. Thinking about the future, I realized that it's necessary to improve and that the knowledge of two languages does not surprise anyone now, not to mention the skill of translation. Now that's when I came up with the idea to study a third foreign language, a Spanish one. As is customary, I started calling courses looking for teachers and native speakers with whom I could practice the language. And then I was disappointed. The courses were too expensive. I could not find any Spanish teachers and there were no native speakers. Well, the desire to learn Spanish never left me and I started looking for solutions. The search began with the internet. I went to free sites, downloaded a few self-tutorials, audio materials for practicing pronunciation and reading rules, and various grammar guides, and got down to work. The first month of studying was very difficult. To begin with, I was not used to working independently at that moment. I could not develop learning techniques and plan my lessons with a schedule. And even more, so studying a language completely unknown to me before was something unthinkable. Days passed, and little by little I learned new words, sorted out the rules of grammar, and learned to read, write, and build simple sentences. Over time, I learned how to use audio material skillfully, discovered video courses, and even found Spanish-speaking pen pals. The skills of practicing on my own allowed me to eventually forget about the language teacher. And French, unlike Spanish, which I started learning from scratch, was much easier to learn on my own with some basic knowledge. So a year passed, I graduated from college, got a degree in translation, and in the summer I went on vacation to Thailand with my family. 
And then, thanks to my belief that hard work is rewarding and ambition is always welcome, I met the Spaniards from Barcelona. I was happy because in a year of studying Spanish, I had never practiced it, neither with a Spanish teacher nor even with the people who taught it. My hopes were justified. I could not imagine that, even on vacation in Thailand, I would be able to meet Spaniards and communicate with them. And most importantly, I spoke fluently and I understood as if I had started Spanish, not for a year, but at least three. I achieved all this by believing in my capabilities and thinking about how I would have been taught by the same teachers in the course. I have impartially assessed the possibilities of internet and my linguistic knowledge and firmly said to myself, wow, I can be a self-taught learner. This is where it all began. When you start learning a language from scratch, you immediately begin to remember how you have taught others before, put it into practice and previous techniques and invent the new ones. Starting on your own, you learn a lot of new things and try different uh, teaching methods and materials that make the journey to your goal easier. I hope that this uh, excerpt from my biography has served as an inspiration for those wishing to learn a language and a pool to self-study. While learning the language, I had to use the computer and the internet, thanks to which I discovered all its invaluable interactive and communicative capabilities. This is what my book will be talking about. Self-study is becoming more and more popular nowadays due to the emergence of many educational materials, self-study books, periodicals, and various audio and video courses. And what is taught by foreign language teachers is not always all that can be learned by starting on your own. However, much depends on the circumstances, mental abilities of students, their conscious and financial capabilities. If you think about it, ask any professional, preferably 45, 50 years old, how many years he or she studied to achieve such mastery in his or her work. If he is a professional, yeah, if he is, he will answer you like all his or her life, uh, he or she studied not at universities, not on courses, but learned everything on his or her personal experience, showing maximal inquisitiveness. So independence and curiosity are the driving forces on the way to perfection. The ability to gain such power means to gain success. You can never understand one language until you understand at least two. Jeffrey Williams. To learn a language or to study it. Have you ever noticed that there are two concepts close to each other to learn a language and to study a language? Probably not everyone has noticed the difference because we usually use both terms in speech. And we are right in both cases. But I deliberately draw a parallel between these two notions because if you look at it this way, the words study and learn are almost synonyms. But still, there is a distance between them. You can study science, history and culture. You can learn a poem, a song, a rule and a language. The word study means abstract cognition and understanding of some important points and concepts about a subject. Does this definition apply to a language? Probably not, because while learning a language, you have to memorize something all the time. Let's take words for example. If you don't learn them, we will be able to understand the written title of a text and start reading it. And if we want to build a sentence ourselves, without knowing either words or grammatical rules, this is hardly possible for anyone. It turns out that the language proficiency is the ability to apply and practice a set of accumulated knowledge in the form of learned words, rules, and common phrases, as well as various speech skills. At the same time, the accumulated knowledge cannot be superficial, especially when it comes to conversational practice. In the process of communicating in a foreign language, you can constantly have to remember the learned words, phrases, speech patterns, and so on and so forth. It's difficult and not always possible to remember everything in the speech. Hence, it follows 
that the speaking skill should be made automatic. How to make speech automatic? Try to learn or rather assimilate the basic knowledge of speech pattern to learn a language. The surest way to memorize something is to learn it. You should memorize all lexical conversational elements. These include words, collocations, expressions, topical dialects, text, etc. Having learned something while speaking, you will not have to reinvent the wheel. Constantly remembering words and straining to come up with a suitable expression. In the post-Soviet period, the so-called academic method prevailed in teaching foreign languages. Uh, I mean, they taught, first of all, to speak correctly by teaching grammar. However, the teaching was usually poor, and as a result, only the temporal forms of regular verbs were kept from the school knowledge. In the West, in the broad sense, they do things differently. There they teach mainly speech cliches, which are easily memorized in the natural environment of communication. Pay attention to the way Germans, Dutch and other Scandinavians speak English, for example, effortlessly, shooting out long sentences. Compare this to the agonizing search for every next word with endless ooh, um, and even scratching in the back of the head, typical for our compatriots who studied under the Soviet and post-Soviet systems. Our children, young people, who have been trained by them, speak as easily as foreigners. It would seem that the solution is found in their practice, as it usually happens. Learn speech patterns of a foreign language and you will speak correctly. If you learn a lot of such cliches, you will be able to speak on any topic. But unfortunately, everything is not that simple. Learning a language by memorizing speech cliches is like learning a phrasebook by heart. Of course, I don't want to exaggerate, but sometimes learning all the phrases of a phrasebook in a row looks scholastic, like learning an English-Russian dictionary. My advice, if you decide to learn a language by using a phrasebook, try making identical expressions with the same learned phrases, using other words. Example, ¿Dónde está la plaza? ¿Dónde está la tienda? Where is the town square? Where is the store? You can also try to match phrases from the phrasebook with grammatical rules from the textbook for better learning. This method is also suitable for keeping up small talks about weather, health, common acquaintances, etc. Moreover, you are not an interpreter who should not limit himself or herself to memorizing speech cliches because the interpreter's speech is imposed by the original. You, unlike an interpreter, can use your bundle of knowledge that has been learned or unlearned. We will talk further about the bundle of knowledge and what it should be to enable you to freely express your thoughts in a foreign language. To study a language. It's hard time to talk about what we study at schools and on courses for several years, spend all our efforts on it, and then do not use it, and in the end we fail to know how to apply it about grammar. To alleviate the problems with regular memorizing of dialects, phrases and topical tests, linguists have proposed the study of grammar. Learning a language on the principle of mastering grammar rules has its pros and cons. Many people believe that to learn a language you need to know all the grammar rules perfectly and be able to master them in practice. But what does grammar itself mean? Grammar is a kind, of, kind of classification of a language, which allows you to learn a language by finding the correspondence of language norms for a speech composition. Grammar is more of a theory. It is possible to learn to speak knowing the theory only. What is grammar for? The original idea of grammar is to learn a language by knowing all its rules. Let's discuss its pros and cons. First of all, the main disadvantage of grammar is the aversion it causes in beginners. At the first steps of learning a language, it seems to everyone to be a fig leaf because of incomprehensibly of the rules and the lack of practical need for them. Would not you lose the desire to learn a language if, at the very first lessons, you were explained to use the articles in abstruse language? then given a tedious, meaningless exercise 
on their positioning in the sentence. It is wrong to do so. I would even call this approach a disrespect to the listeners. Beginners should be given the freedom to create even a false, in the opinion of the corifers, perception of mastery of the language. It's recommended to learn simple words and simple expressions such as Hello, how are you? What's your name? And how old are you? Which are taught playfully and memorize these. If you explain the rules of grammar to beginners, it's better not to get carried away with their abstruse explanations. It's desirable to use as few complicated terms as possible and to cite as many examples as possible. An effective process would be one in which students fire off their examples as if from a machine gun, applying the rules they have learned and demonstrating their practical value. I do not consider grammar to be such an essential element of language mastery. The depth of grammar study should be determined by the degree of the learner's background. For example, if a group has just recently completed A1 level, there is no need to move on to learning the subjunctive mood and compound tenses. The second drawback of grammar is the impossibility of mastering spoken language fluently. Imagine you know grammar well and you have a good vocabulary. But then it's time to express your thoughts and again it doesn't go easily. First you try to remember the appropriate words, then grammatical rules, then put all the words into a sentence, quickly mentally check yourself on the correctness of the sentence and then verbally express the thought. It takes about 20 seconds to do all that. How does this happen? It's simple. Most of the time we practice the language in exercises and we have enough time to think about them. It takes us 3 to 4 seconds to translate a sentence or substitute a verb for. But we don't have that in live speech. Maybe I'm exaggerating something, but many people who learn a language only by grammar must often express their thoughts with two or three words without reaching fluency. The third disadvantage according to which it is not worth considering grammar as a way of teaching spoken language is that grammar in fact, like any other theory, has the property of airing out. Any theory is quickly forgotten because it's not needed or there is no possibility to apply it in practice. The point is that human beings have well-developed practical thinking rather than abstract thinking. If grammar fades with time, what should remain in the memory? And what should remain should be the templates by which a sentence is constructed. After all, without thinking about it, you can substitute the name Roman instead of my name is Artyom or his name is or his surname is instead of my name is. Now we have a more complicated example. Let's assume that the subjunctive mood is being considered. If I were you, I would buy, which means на вашем месте я бы купил. You can substitute another verb before buy, such as say, and thus change the sentence to на вашем месте я бы сказал. So in the end, what is the best thing to memorize when learning grammar so that you don't waste your time? You should memorize patterns, not specific rules. I would like to point out that the model of teaching grammar from practice to theory is widely used in the Cambridge or uh, Oxford learning systems. As you have realized, the problem of learning a language through grammar most often lies in the lack of its practical application. Another drawback of grammar is that it's detached from vocabulary, as is often the case. Just imagine you learn the rules and each of them is supplied with a few examples. You can learn the whole grammar book, but in the end you will not learn to speak. First of all, you will have a poor vocabulary and secondly, you will not have the skills of practical application of grammar. It's important to understand, maybe even realize, the practical use of rules in speech when you analyze a grammar lesson. And this is something we do not see in everyday language lessons, in educational institutions and courses. After all, grammar cannot exist without vocabulary. For practical mastery of the language, either a dialogue or a topical text must be learned, and it's better to learn it 
all at once. Moreover, there are some grammatical rules that can be understood only at a certain stage of language learning. It's useless to explain to a beginner the rules of the sequence of tenses of the subjunctive mood in a compound sentence, and then we are surprised at how many people start learning languages and give up this thankless journey. In case you still want to learn speaking skills using grammar, study each rule carefully. Try to do as many exercises as possible to consolidate them. I recommend translation exercises. And do not proceed to the study of a new subject if you have not understood the previous one. Grammar cannot be completely excluded from our diet. Without it, expressions, lexical expressions, patterns of narrative and interrogative sentences building, etc. will not be understood. Those who use grammar as an add to practical speaking lessons can find useful speech patterns that allow them to translate correctly when working with the text. You just need to know how to use grammar correctly, understand the purpose of its study, and consider it as a supporting element, framework of a spoken language. I can add that as much as I learn grammar, I still build phrases on a subconscious level. How to achieve that skill? Read more about it in my book. When converting the topic of whether to learn a language or to study it, we forget to take into account one important factor without which it's certainly impossible to learn to communicate freely, is listening to speech. All the elements of a language to be learned must be accompanied by sound. Few people who learn a language resort to audio recordings and uh, how wrong they are. For the most part, it's only through auditory perception that you can learn a language. Imagine if you spend a whole year learning a language only from printed materials, without audio, what will you learn? You may be able to write without mistakes, translate and express your thoughts in writing, but you will not be able to speak fluently. Then, why do you need to learn a language if you can't speak it? Question on the topic. Why are deaf mutes called so? Maybe a person just can't hear and he is at once considered not only deaf but also mute? The answer to the topic, without listening to speech, it's impossible to learn to speak. Conclude it for yourself. You can also compare learning languages with learning music. My mother graduated from a music conservatory. My brother graduated from a music school and my father played the silo in his youth, so don't wonder why I compare language learning with music learning. Let's say you learn only musical notes, the theory about music is solfeggio, and without even sitting down at any instrument or hearing a piece of music, will you learn to play? Not listening to music makes it hard to memorize the notes. Likewise, not seeing the notes makes it hard to memorize the music. We face the same thing when learning a language. Without listening to foreign speech, your efforts to learn to speak will come to nothing. And I'm not even talking about the fact that you will not be able to understand the other people speaking. How will you be able to understand your interlocutor who speaks in his native language with his uh, peculiar pronunciation? Of course, sometimes knowing a lot of words can help. If you don't understand the whole phrase or of the interlocutor, you can at least uh, recover the meaning of what was said by a couple of three familiar words. The problem is also that native speakers speak with a different intonation than recorded speakers or teachers. The problem is also that native speakers speak with a different intonation than recorded speakers or teachers. It's necessary to develop the skill of listening, oral perception of speech. And audio tracks to printed materials are helpful in this. Those Soviet times have passed when people managed to learn a language without audio materials. Lingophone courses were not available to everyone. Foreigners were impossible to meet and it was also impossible to hear live foreign speech. Today, thankfully, there are no borders of communication and traveling around the world, which makes mastering a life of foreign language a simpler and more exciting experience. Let's dive back 
into our childhood and remember how we learned to speak. After all, at the age of five, not everyone can read and write, but they can speak. It appears that you can learn to speak faster than to read or write. Take a five-year-old child as an example and think about how he or she managed to learn to speak. It's very simple. The child copied words and intonations from the parent's speech. Mom, dad, can, cannot. Of course, perceiving these words by hearing. The child learned not only new sounds and words, but also intonations, thanks to which, even without knowing the meaning of words, he could understand whether his parents asked him a question, whether they condemned his behavior, etc. You should not forget about such a God-given gift as hearing, especially when learning a language, because it can be of great benefit to you. Let's take an example from children, just uh, for once. Let's try to repeat after the presenter as if we were children, repeating everything after our parents, copying intonation and melody, and of course respecting the peculiarities of foreign language pronunciation. Summarizing this section, I would like to recall the Russian proverb, no pains, no gains. No matter how much you would like to follow the path of less resistance, even if you learn the language by grammar, you will still have to learn vocabulary and words. Especially if your goal is to master speaking, try to learn as many lexical units as possible, be it words, common phrases or cliches, dialogues, and thematic text, and uh, even boring examples of grammar rules. The main thing is not to be lazy, to treat the lessons with ease and relaxation, and not to forget to use sound materials in lessons. We will talk about the main techniques of uh, language learning in the second chapter. I hope I have answered the question of why they say study math or study physics but learn a language. However, due to the awkward combination of learn and language in some expressions, such as overcoming difficulties in studying a language, the verb to study will be used in the title of some headings as the text goes on, and uh, of course, in the title of the book itself. So I hope that readers will forgive me for this uh, compromise and not consider it as a gaff or a logical error. No man should travel until he has learned the language of the country he visits. Otherwise, he voluntarily makes himself a great baby so hopeless and so ridiculous. Ralph Waldo Emerson Grammar and Vocabulary Theory and Practice Let's continue our conversation about teaching or learning a language. In this section, we will examine the relationship between grammar and vocabulary using examples from a particular language. The inspiration for this section was a Russian language textbook. Yes, yes, the native Russian language is uh, written for Russian-speaking students. So let's open the textbook. We are impressed by two sections of the book, Theoretical Phonetics and Theoretical Grammar. Now that everything is theoretical. The textbook gives many rules of reading and pronunciation, describes in details the phonetic system of the language, etc. In the section of theoretical grammar, there are endless in-depth rules, uh, declensions of nouns, conjugations of verbs of different groups, theoretical explanations of the genus of nouns, their endings, declensions, and so on and so forth. There are many exercises on which the substitution of verb or noun endings. What is typical is the lack of correlation of lexical content with the studied conversational topics, family, food, profession, etc. Very few dialects and text. The Russian language textbook reminded me of a grammar book. It's unlikely that a foreigner would have the desire to study with such a textbook on his own, unless it is a course with a Russian language teacher. Here I wondered what would happen if I were a foreigner whose native language was not Russian and I wanted to learn it. I had a strong desire to get a Russian te language textbook for foreigners and to see how Russian is taught to them. My impressions were indescribable. In the textbook of Russian for foreigners, there are no abstruse explanations of grammar. All the rules are not piled on top of each other as is practiced in our books. 
but are gradually provided depending on the common colloquial phrases where each word is translated. The most pleasant thing in the textbook of Russian for foreigners is the availability of dialects on various day-to-day -day topics and simple texts for reading and retelling. When you communicate with foreigners who are learning Russian, you are astonished at how calmly they speak it. Don't you wonder how they manage to master one of the most difficult languages in the world? Some people who learn even the same simple English become ashamed of their inability to speak it. Unwittingly, there is a question, why do our language textbooks resemble linguistics reference books? The simple fact is that Russian is our native language. We can easily communicate in Russian, express our thoughts, and describe various events in life. We can read without difficulties. We do not think of building sentences in a word. Russian is our native language, uh, is not the wider sense of the word. And the Russian textbook itself helps us to understand our native language. I mean, to learn the correct spelling of vocabulary words and punctuation, and ultimately to learn the science of linguistics. Consequently, the task of a Russian language textbook for foreigners is to reveal the main aspects of correct pronunciation, reading, and use of the Russian language in everyday communication while enlarging the student's vocabulary stock. The reason why I cited this textbook as an example is that it is not intended for a foreign audience, but rather for students who are learning the int intricacies of their native Russian. The most interesting thing is that textbooks that are designed for a foreign-speaking audience are created not by authors for whom this or that language is a native one, but as a rule by linguists who seriously study a foreign language and they generally succeed in textbook masterpieces. And where should be given effort learning a language vocabulary grammar? How to understand the abstruse rules in textbooks? What should be combined with what and what should be spent more what less time learning a language? Lexics, from Greek lexikos, verbal vocabulary, is the central part of language or a physical reality. In the foreign language learner's understanding, vocabulary means all speech elements of the language, such as words, word combinations, lexical expressions, common colloquial phrases, etc. As you have already noticed, the majority of foreign language classes are held utilizing continuous explanations of extremely voluminous grammar rules with a lot of subtleties, making things as clear as mud. When looking at the rules, sometimes there are no explanatory examples, as well as the opportunity to enrich the vocabulary in the form of words, colloquial phrases, dialects, topics, text, etc. It's impossible when learning a language to move not so much through the grammatical index, but through lexical topics, enriching the vocabulary with expressions and words on a given topic. For example, when studying the topic food and drinks, you should enrich your vocabulary by learning the names of cutlery, food and dishes, and memorizing common phrases and examples of their use in a restaurant or cafe. It's recommended to memorize all the lexical units on the topic by learning a dialect or a thematic text. Try to learn as much lexical material as possible, rather than grammatical material. Explanations of grammar rules should be minimized. Only the basic and common phenomena in the language, detailed cases of rules applications can be further elaborated as the course progresses. It's recommended that the new grammatical rules will be considered in the context of the lexical subjects being studied. As an example, let's take a colloquial phrase in French from a phrase book. Pourriez-vous m'aider? Could you help me? First, let's learn this phrase and now let's analyze its syntax from the grammatical point of view. Pourriez is the verb pouvoir, to be able. In futur dans le passé. Vous means you. Me means me, personal pronoun, direct object. Aider, to help, semantic verb used in the infinitive after the modal verb. What should we do if grammar is explained in isolation from vocabulary? Suppose we have learned how to conjugate verbs of groups one and two, 
what should we do next and what if we know only 5 to 10 verbs what will this knowledge tell us therefore we can conclude that learning grammar rules without vocabulary is pointless there is a need to constantly replenish your vocabulary remember the more words you know the easier the grammar rules will be learned and the faster you will learn to speak as you progress through the lexical section you will increase your vocabulary and familiarize yourself with frequently used phrases colloquialisms and idioms and gradually relying on the lessons vocabulary you study no not learn grammatical rules for some reasons i always remember the aphorism of lomonosov mikhail vasilievich mathematics should be loved for the fact that it puts the mind in order but whenever i read this aphorism i want to rephrase it as follows grammar should be loved for the fact that it puts the tongue in order However, it is up to you to love it or hate it. But wasting your energy only on grammar, you will lose a lot of extra time and you will never learn to speak. Even if you know the grammar rules perfectly and have a relatively low vocabulary, it turns out that the knowledge of grammar is obtained in vain. And if in addition to this, you take a creative break for 6 months, then grammar will be completely washed out. of our smart hats summarizing all this i want you to make a small conclusion friends after reading this section i think many of you judging by the level of your foreign language proficiency have set the right priorities if you are not good at speaking and you often scratch the back of your head in searching of a word and reach your vocabulary lexical stock and if On the contrary, you have a large lexical stock, but you somehow can't bind words. I suggest studying grammatical rules, delving into the logic, and analyzing the cases of their use. When you grow up in a family of languages, you develop a kind of casual fluency so that languages, through differently colored, all seem transparent to experience. David Antin. Is it possible to forget a language? I often hear that if you don't learn a language for a while, you forget it. Why try to learn something that will be forgotten sooner or later? So why does a language get forgotten? How to learn it so that you don't forget it later? First things first. It happened to me that when I was learning Spanish on my own, I took a 2 month break from it because I had to learn French. Then, after the break, I was unable to take up the study of Spanish as it was time to exam uh, then after exams I went on vacation to Thailand and then I had to remember about existence on vacation I met a couple of Spaniards from Barcelona and taking the opportunity started a conversation with them and as it turned out all the basic elements of the knowledge I learned at the very beginning and it was a no more no less than 8 months from that moment it seemed like a lot of time although um it used to take longer for example i took a break from english for a year and a year and a half and two years and i didn't forget it but why did it happen in this case the answer is simple everything i learned in english was backed up by practice exercises face to face communication in a foreign language etc i did not have such a pleasant opportunity when learning spanish because i learned it on my own without help without excessive exercises and most importantly without speaking the language i was learning to put it simply there was no practical knowledge uh, or language experience which means that the learned information was not sufficiently consolidated Communicating with the people of Barcelona did me good. In the first minutes of communication with them, I remembered both words, scrolling them in my head, and grammatical rules. Gradually, I began to remember everything I had learned, and my communication brought fruits. I refreshed my knowledge, gained more confidence in learning Spanish, discovered weaknesses in my learning techniques. and learned a lot about the Spanish language and the people of Barcelona. If I were to give myself a detailed report on what I had forgotten before I communicated, 
it would be about 15 to 20 percent of my knowledge among other things adjectives conjunctions speech cliches etc in my opinion if you don't want to forget a language you need to learn it through roughly namely in such a way that it stays in your head and for this purpose it's extremely necessary to practice speaking let's say you have learned new words let it be on the topic health and now try to come up with a dialogue on this very topic on your own and make sentences with the words if you are practicing in pairs even better act out a dialogue with your partner imagine a situation in which you are a foreigner complaining about the health and using the vocabulary you have learned try to explain yourself or at least suggest what expressions and grammatical rules you would use at a doctor's appointment or for example if you are learning vocabulary on the topic of tourism um, means of transportation travel imagine yourself in a situation when buying tickets choosing a means of transportation and moving around the city believe me the knowledge and skills of foreign speech gained in this way will be remembered for a long time translation exercises from your native language into a foreign one should not be neglected at times the knowledge trained uh, through translation exercises for example sticks in my memory for a long time to come avoid randomly memorizing words that are not sorted by topic this way you will not only fail to memorize them but also have no idea how they are used in speech by the way those who started the language from a phrase book trying to memorize more phrases face the same problem as when memorizing random words however i have come across some individuals who were able to learn a language by simply opening a dictionary and starting the words in alphabetic order more than once i have met people who have said the following to me i lived in new york for a year mastered english perfectly and when i came home to my homeland i soon forgot it from a worldly point of view i could only sympathize but from a professional perspective i wanted to object firstly it's impossible to master a language perfectly even during the most intense year in a language environment and secondly as it turned out the language had not been studied before and all the rules of grammar vocabulary semantics and syntax were so to speak grabbed on the fly and therefore as they came so they went and then as it turned out later our traveler's knowledge in new york was limited only to commonly used phrases such as how much does it cost what time is it how do i get there and so on and can all these be uh, called a perfect knowledge of the language do not believe in false advertising and henceforth be wary of fakes and lash stories about language proficiency and fluency It turns out that unless you have a basic knowledge of the language traveling abroad to learn it will not be beneficial. Remember you go abroad to improve the language not to learn it. So here it is forgettable colloquial language. So the conclusion is this do not forget the language and do not learn it apart from practice. namely if you have learned words phrases and dialects try to create your sentences with the learned material it is all very simple if you learn a language scholastically and without practice the accumulated knowledge will disappear as quickly as it was learned whatever you learn in a course or on your own should have a practical purpose behind it chapter 2 ways of learning a language a different language is a different vision of life federico fellini classical language learning methods before giving our readers guidelines for selecting educational materials i would like to dwell a little on the drawbacks of classic ways of learning languages and suggest new approaches to organizing classes more effectively perhaps each of us remember how we studied english at school few of us who graduated from school had sufficient knowledge of english to get a good job or go to a specialized language university 
Perhaps everyone has memories of how we learned useless grammar rules in educational institutions, did hundreds of exercises, translated some unnecessary text, and wrote out piles of words we didn't even learn. Once a month, we listened to audio tapes with the slow and clear speech. After getting negative uh, marks, over time the desire to learn the language disappeared, while English lessons were a hard labor. Uh, do you remember how we were taught a second foreign language? Uh, all I can personally remember learning French at school is the memorized alphabet, counting from 1 to 60 and conjugation of the verbs avoir et être. Isn't it funny? Judging by the enthusiasm with which teachers uh, teach us languages, one gets the feeling that either their knowledge of the subject is insignificant or they are not motivated to all uh, to work in the profession. In this section, I would like to talk about classical language learning methods and their disadvantages. Lack of practice. The first and the major disadvantage of language teaching is the lack of practice. The false principle of combined pedagogical and language teaching inherited from Soviet times leads to the fact that all language classes are summed up in grammar exercises, mindless memorizing of rules, and group reading of texts without translation. Not to mention the model of translator training in both Soviet universities, which can be compared to the training of professional swimmers in a children's swimming pool. The fact that they sometimes get good results can only be explained by the extraordinary talent of our people and their ability to adapt to any ridiculous situation created by the authorities and the system. I often hear people say Germans, Dutch, French, Turks, etc. are smart. If you speak to them in English, they answer you in English. In Spanish, they immediately switch to Spanish. But us, calm down, fellow citizens, it's not your fault. First, the authorities have kept us in complete isolation from the rest of the world for 70 years, and in the West, it's customary, say, to spend children's vacation and leave in Spain. When in France, where willy-nilly you buy food from a Spaniard or a Frenchman, and at the same time, you have to speak Spanish or French with them, where children play with French or Spanish children. Secondly, in good countries, tourists do not go under tutelage, but live among the locals, socialize and trade with them. A language in such settings is learned naturally and easily, though rather superficially, and its knowledge should be consolidated by systemic learning. Unclear rules. According to classical teaching methods, many students are forced to learn the rules. Why? First, let's analyze the rules of the native language and a foreign one, and then answer the question above. Everyone remembers Russian classes in elementary school, where we explained the rules of spelling, verb conjugation, noun declension, and phonetic parsing of words, although I cannot understand why it's necessary. In high school, we studied types of compound sentences, in-depth study of language styles, spelling, and other theories, and everything that is written in Russian textbooks for grades 9 to 11 is more likely the theory of linguistics, which I have already written about in the previous chapter, mentioning Russian textbooks as an example. The fact that the native language textbooks had a lot of rules concerning not the language but the advanced theory of linguistics, I think, um, did not bother anyone. Even on the contrary, the knowledge of linguistics helps to understand the rules of a foreign language, which we are going to talk about right now. Is it possible to blindly calibrate the teaching techniques of native speech to the teaching techniques of a foreign speech? Very different approaches are required. As I have already written, most of the lesson, if not the whole lesson, is spent on the conjugation of divergent verbs, possessive pronouns, articles, and so on and so forth. For each rule, two to three examples are given, and uh, then you are forced to learn the same rules. And here I have a question. Why do we learn the rules of a foreign language? What will the learned rule give us in practice? And what if you don't understand the meaning of or what you have learned? Suppose even you understand the rule, will you use it in the conversation and at all? Will you remember it? 
The answer is simple, of course not. Just imagine how much time it will take until you recall the rules directly in the process of communication. It is unlikely that you will remember the ending of an irregular verb uh, in the third person singular. It cannot be claimed that it's useless to learn all the rules. I believe the only thing is that is worth learning is the verbs in the individual conjugation. And here indeed, knowing the difficult irregular verbs in person will allow you to use them in the correct form, both in speech and in writing. Thus, the main difference between learning a native language and a foreign one lies in the fact that we can speak freely in our native language, and the rules of spelling and uh, particularly punctuation help us to express our thoughts freely and uh, competently in writing. And if you are talking about a foreign language, then there is no point in memorizing the rules. Remember, the main point of the rule is not to learn it, but to understand it. If you do not understand the rule, analyze its use cases, determine its practical value, and eventually learn all kinds of examples of the rule. In case you still do not understand almost all the explanations and examples in the textbook, simply turn to other sources where the rules are explained in simple language and where more effective exercises and more practical examples are available. Inefficient time management for reading and translating the text aloud. Uh, while some students read a paragraph at a nail space and then translate it even slower, a good 5 to 10 minutes can pass. And what if there are 15 people in the class? Just imagine if the lesson is not 45 minutes but 2 hours and reading one A4 text can take about 30 minutes and your involvement in the class will take only 5 minutes. Of course, all of this could be overlooked if English was taught, say, four to five times a week and not one or two. A language requires daily attention, and if you are talented in languages and you study in a linguistic gymnasium with this approach to teaching, think about it. Rare use of audio materials. The fact that there is no tape recording in the classroom where foreign languages are taught does not embarrass anyone. Is it possible to study without listening to speech? I can't imagine it. Can you personally imagine a music lesson without a musical instrument? Language is like music. You need to hear and listen to it, trying to reproduce what you hear. Even if you play a cassette tape and turn the volume up to full blast, it's unlikely that the playback quality of a worn-out tape will be satisfactory. Poor playback quality is half of the trouble. The speaker's foreign speech itself is so slow that it seems that most of those present are just uh, starting to learn the language, being in the third year of a foreign language university. No wonder that even students who have graduated from the institute as interpreters, not to mention college, no matter how hard they try, cannot get into the foreigner speech. Even the most diligent student, until he sees his first foreigner, will not understand half of what he said because no tape recorder can substitute for a live speech. Thus, tedious reading of one text during the whole lesson, memorizing meaningless grammar rules, and uh, rare use of audio recordings, this is what a typical foreign language lesson is like. If you are fortunate to learn a language in this manner and you want to keep up with the trend, I can advise you to practice the language on your own more often. Buy a textbook that explains the rules in detail and clearly and contains good exercises to practice them. I recommend that uh, you listen to foreign speech more often or better yet communicate with foreigners and do not wait for teachers to put the language into your mouth and chew it for you. You should not get upset comparing the knowledge of a foreign language with that of Europeans. You will be able to communicate in a foreign language as easily as they do. You just need to get the right learning environment. I hope that this book will give you plenty of tips on how to make your lessons efficient and useful. Let the syllabus be just a guide to keep you on track. A self-study book will be the foundation upon which your independent language learning will be built. By following the textbook, studying topic by topic and learning new words by themes, we will move forward on the way to mastering the language. What should a self-study book be like so that it would be easier for a student to start getting to know the language and more interesting for the continuing student to improve? First of all, the book must be supplied with audio recordings, otherwise how will you learn to pronounce words, put the accent and observe the correct intonation? 
Before you choose a self-study book, review the content of the book, its lexical composition, and the difficulty of the rules explanations. I advise you to be wary of so-called express courses, named for example Spanish in one month or French in four weeks, or even there is such a course English in 15 minutes. I do not recommend using them at the initial stage of learning languages for the following reasons. Firstly, they explain the rules in the most concise form, often without examples, which creates a risk of misunderstanding and confusion. Secondly, such books, as a rule, have very little lexical content, texts, dialects, words, which makes it impossible to consolidate the rules and master the basics of communication. Thirdly, think to yourself, is it even possible to learn a language in a month or even three? I don't deny it. I tried to take such a fast-track course myself, and in the end, um, even with my linguistic background, after months of lessons, I still haven't learned anything. The book provided me with brief rules, very first exercises to practice them, and a dozen of sentences, and uh, that was probably it. There were no texts in the foreign language. There were only a dozen dialects for the entire volume of the book, and the dialects were completely isolated from the topic under study. The self-tutor was a grammar book. The only acceptable target audience for such courses are students who have a good mastery of the language and want to refresh their knowledge, but not those who are learning the language from scratch. The main requirement for self-study books is good lexical material, clear rules, and of course the availability of audio recordings. Before using self-study books, don't forget to read the preface to them, as they may give you some good advice on how to study independently. Audio and video materials. Suppose you have a lot of time to learn words, dialects, and topics, but uh, your memory is not working well, and after learning you can't use your knowledge, you don't understand foreign speech well. In this case, audio recordings of materials will assist you. In addition to helping you listen to the material you are learning, they can also serve as an audio textbook. Language audio classes can be used whenever and wherever you want. All you need is a player and half an hour of free time. Audio courses are an audio companion to a book or they are an audio textbook on their own. Usually audio courses are supplied with printed materials that contain the audio transcription in the text form, otherwise known as transcripts. Preferably any audio course should come with a textbook that contains the audible printed material and its translation. Auxiliary material should be studied after listening to the lessons or any part of the course. After listening to the audio materials, you need to compare the speaker's speech against the text, and write out new words, try to repeat after the speaker, and so on and so forth. Recently, audio podcasts have become widespread. In Europe, for example, it has become trendy to change the radio receiver to a foreign wave on which the language being studied is broadcast. In the CIS countries, particularly in Kazakhstan, there is no broadcasting in a foreign language. So I advise you to download an app on your smartphone that allows you to listen to the radio via an internet connection. I've always learned from books and used audio recordings, but I haven't used another important but little known method of language learning, the video courses. As I said before, the most effective and probably the only way to learn to speak is to communicate with native speakers. But what should you do if it is simply impossible to find a native speaker and almost all foreigners speak only English while you would like to learn, say, French? What should you do if you study the language on your own or with teachers in courses but you still haven't learned how to speak it? I faced the same problem myself when I wanted to find native speakers to practice with. I applied to various linguistic centers and educational institutions, but I could not find native speakers. The thing is that I have been learning languages on my own for a year now, and I don't see the need for teachers and courses, as I can learn everything without their help. With video courses, you can learn to speak quickly. Watching a video in a foreign language, preferably with subtitles in your native or foreign language, you sort of immerse yourself in the language environment. Many of us often hear uh, stories about how people with no knowledge of a foreign language went abroad and six months later could speak a language they had not learned before. 
The same can be achieved with the help of video courses. When watching training videos, movies and news, you mentally immerse yourself in the language environment. You follow the gestures of speakers, the movements of their speech organs and intonation and unconsciously acquire speech skills typical of native speakers. What do video courses look like? Video courses are most often tutorial films designed specifically for students learning a foreign language. They usually feature scenes, dialects from different areas of people's lives or to illustrate their daily lives. The more video courses are used in the learning process, the deeper you will dive into the language environment. You can achieve a greater benefit by watching a tutorial movie with subtitles. You can first watch a video with Russian subtitles and then with subtitles in the language you are learning. Thanks to the videos, you will not only better perceive a foreign speech by listening, but also quickly learn the proper pronunciation and thanks to the subtitles, the rules of spelling. Modern foreign language movies can be recommended for advanced learners since watching them will allow you to learn subtleties, slang, idioms, neologisms of the language you are learning. Vocabulary Let's imagine that language is made up of words, and the more we know words, the better we know the language. To prove this statement, I can give hundreds of examples when a person who came to a foreign country, having no more than a good stock of words, could comfortably express himself or herself, and the most surprising thing is that people understood him or her. Although, what is there to be surprised about? There was a case when I worked in a hotel and an American stayed with us. It was funny to hear him say, Я имею броню в этот отель. Пожалуйста, тут мой паспорт. Какое время стартовать завтрак? Of course, we all realized he was trying to tell us and delicately offered to switch to his native language for convenience. This shows that even a stylistically coarse and grammatically incorrect set of words can get the point across and you will be understood. After all, agree. Many people have had such a case when you had to go abroad on a business trip and at the same time not knowing a foreign language. What if a person does not know a foreign language? He will be lost in a foreign land? If you have at least major vocabulary and know a couple of necessary tourist phrases, you can easily get out of any situation. The summary is simple. The knowledge of words is essential as they can be compared to bricks in the language, necessary to build a house in your case, to build a speech. Being bricks, words are the foundation and walls. Therefore, when learning a language, always look up the meaning of an unknown word in the dictionary. Then, write it out with the translation in your vocabulary notebook, numbering each new word at the same time. Especially, you should focus on verbs. They are critical in language because they are used in every sentence and without them it's impossible to express any desire, thought or intention. Just imagine if you learned at least 200 basic verbs, you would already be able to express yourself easily. Next you need to know question words and adjectives. Question words are an integral part of questioning, but adjectives will help you express emotions. And when it is a matter of quickly enriching the vocabulary, sometimes adjectives can be neglected. Although, again, I repeat, always strive to replenish the vocabulary. Having learned at least a thousand common words, most of them verbs, you will not be lost in a foreign environment. Do you know that when speaking our native language, we use only the most common words and we do not have many of them, about 5,000? An educated and intelligent person has about 12,000 of them. Consequently, even if you know 5,000 colloquial words plus common colloquial phrases, you can safely express your thoughts in a language foreign to you. The only thing that poses a difficulty in memorizing words, when words are learned in isolation from the situation and context, they are not memorized. Try to relate the learning of words to some conversational topics, travel, work, food, family, etc. An extensive vocabulary will help you understand what the text is about. And then, once you know the words, you can move up uh, to parsing and learning grammatical rules, but this will be covered a little later. When learning words, use associations. It's a very effective method for memorizing new information. Now let's move on to common colloquial phrases.
Common colloquial phrases include such expressions which cannot be made up or coined by yourself, even knowing the necessary words for this. For example, here are the most common expressions. Hello, how are you? What's your name? Goodbye. What a pity. What a good luck. How old are you? Where are you from? What are your hobbies? And so on. Different languages reflect reality in various ways and describe certain phenomena of reality differently. We say, be careful not to stumble, while the English say, mind your step. We say, dispose of your time, while the English say, take your time. We wish, have a good appetite, while the English wish you to enjoy your meal. And Spaniards generally wish, que proveche, which means, have a benefit because Spaniards, as they believe, do not have uh, appetite problems. You are wondering what a direct translation of cliches, expressions would look like. I imagine your emotions when in a Thai hotel restaurant, you read a sign translated into Russian as follows. Пожалуйста, имейте ваш завтрак быстро и имейте хороший день. It's necessary to keep in mind the difference in cultural and ethical traditions. It's desirable to know as many commonly used stable colloquial phrases as possible, to try to catch them in the conversational speech of foreigners and memorize them. Speech cliches and stamps expressing the most popular vocabulary stratum of the language to know a person visiting another country is necessary, even for the simple need to navigate the signs and inscriptions. As for the meanings of signs and inscriptions, their definitions are given in all phrase books, as a rule in the section Appendices. In addition to the above mentioned words and common phrases, I would like to emphasize other very effective speech work pieces represented by dialects and thematic text. They play nearly the main role in acquiring speech skills. Dialects reflect the essence of human communication and various situations that you may encounter more than once. Having learned a dialect, you can operate with ready-made phrases for a mate instead of inventing them yourself. In addition, the dialects display the proper formulation of questions and answers to them. You can also learn individual phrases from a phrase book, but uh, unlike them, a dialect contains practical features of using phrases which allows you to memorize them with less loss of time and effort. The learned phrases in the dialect can be used in any communication without taking them to compare them yourself. It's desirable to know dialects on various topics of communication, and the more you know dialects, the easier it will be for you to communicate with native speakers and explain your thoughts. Topical conversational subjects. Teachers and students otherwise call them usually topics. These topics are text on a limited subject. These are different topics. For example, the topical text, my work, tells about who you work with, what your speciality is, and uh, what you do in life, what difficulties arise at work, and much more. For example, if you compose a about yourself topical text, you can have a continuous monologue um, about who you are, what you do, what you are passionate about, and so on. Topic about my country will allow you to tell a foreigner about the country where you live and the way of life of its inhabitants, and thus you will not only show yourself a patriot and an educated person, but also a good interlocutor. Isn't it worth it? By composing text of different conversational topics and then learning them, you can easily have a conversation on any topic prepared in advance. It's recommended to compose thematic text yourself. In some way, they are very similar to essays, but unlike essays, it's desirable to learn them, or at least retell them. If you are not able to compose thematic text because of your poor foreign language skills or because you don't know enough grammar, you should not be frustrated. Bookstores specifically sell such books with topics, generally they are called as follows, 100 topics of spoken English, 400 topics of French or English topics. After getting to know the new words in the text, try to compose a similar one using your own words which you understand well and use in speech, simplifying complex sentences and phrases. Again, phrases can be used from the topics to describe a particular communication situation. It's 
memorizing common phrases, dialects, and text that will allow you to master fluent foreign speech. However, you should remember that to learn anything thoughtlessly and with reluctance means to waste time and effort. In the first chapter, I have already talked about it, and I will not hesitate to repeat myself again. Native speaker. Over the years of studying languages and linguistics, I have realized one thing. It's impossible to overcome the language barrier so that you can learn to speak. To do this, you need native speakers, people who are native speakers of the language you are learning. Native speakers, unlike teachers, cannot physically speak in your native language and prompt you with words, thus forcing you to use your brain and remember the words and expressions you have learned. You should not be embarrassed by such communication. Even at first, you will stutter and will not understand anything. In the first minutes of communication, you will feel annoyed, frustrated, deficient, and uncomfortable, but you should not be upset about it. If you have enough patience and courage, then after 10 to 15 days of talking for an hour or two a day, you will overcome the above complexes, and most importantly, you will identify your gaps in knowledge, which should be addressed. The feature of the communication process with a native speaker is its effect of uh, desperation, which forces you to speak. Mm, example, gratia, mm, to use your existing vocabulary, shifting the learned words from the passive vocabulary shelf to the active vocabulary shelf. If your questions and answers are understood by a native speaker in the first few minutes of conversation and the talk is gradually maintained, then I can congratulate you on your first victory. You don't have to look for a native speakers to practice English for a long time. There are many courses where they teach, among which the most important is English clubs. In big cities and capitals, you can meet foreigners, native speakers, almost every day on the street, in the supermarket, and most often in hotels. I find it difficult to meet native speakers in French and uh, even more difficult in Spanish. I worked in an international hotel at the reception desk and every day people of different nationalities and from different countries of the world came to the hotel uh, they all spoke their native language, Spanish, French. When asking for services and here I did not miss the opportunity to exchange a few words with the guests. Social media. And how could it be otherwise if English is so entrenched on the throne of the language of international communication that uh, it has even taken root? What about mere mortals who want to learn exotic languages, which include Spanish and French? The Internet comes to our ad. Lack of communication can be replaced by various foreign web portals, social media and forums, among which we can mention Internet messengers. ICQ, Miranda, Skype, WhatsApp, Viber. Working with messengers is not difficult. Just register in the program, open the search box, and enter the languages or uh, country of the user of the language you are studying. The disadvantage of this search method is the user's fear of spamming or general reluctance to ask strangers seeking to allegedly encroach on their privacy. That's the way foreigners are. And if you are lucky enough to get authorized, you can proceed. Do you speak English or parlez-vous français? And so on. If you are comfortable and think you already have a good level of knowledge, you can also start making calls on your computer via Skype. This is an ideal substitute for real dialects with a native speaker. There are also various forums, blogs, and social media. Over the recent five years, language learning portals have become very popular, allowing everyone uh, who wants to learn foreign languages to choose the courses that suit them best and to find native speakers or just friends on the same platforms, earning points for completed exercises or learn words. One such language portal is buzu.com or leo.org. In terms of virtual communication, the possibilities of the Internet are endless. You can't argue with that. Multimedia courses. Technological progress never ceases to indulge us with an uh, abundance of software and hardware that allows us not only to save time attending courses, but also to learn new skills. There are software applications that teach us the ten-finger typing method, playing musical instruments, and Oh wonder, there are programs that allow us to learn languages. 
These programs are multimedia courses containing a variety of entertaining content, thanks to which the user can quickly learn new words, hone pronunciation and grammar, and learn to read and write correctly. The program serves as both a textbook and a teacher at the same time. It does not only select the appropriate exercise for you, but at the same time checks it. The module for speaking skills development even allows you to monitor the student's pronunciation. The advantage of a multimedia course is that it not only measures your progress in language learning, but also gives you advice on choosing lessons and the length of your classes. The most common multimedia courses are the American line of Tell Me More or French courses such as Francais de Luxe. I also recommend the domestic software program Self-Tutor of English by Clementiva with English Abroad. A couple of these programs will easily replace even the most demanding teacher and language lessons will give you a lot of pleasure. Translation exercises as a way to master speaking. Another method, in my opinion, effective for unleashing the tongue is translation exercises. This section is not about simply translating text from a foreign language into Russian, but about translation exercises of 10 to 15 sentences from Russian into a foreign language. Let's say you are studying with a self-study book. In the section Grammar, there are rules for using the future tense with examples. Below the rule, there is a couple of translation exercises. Usually, the translation exercises are accompanied by a self-checking key in the appendix of the textbook. Doing these exercises helps to practice grammar rules and develop the skills to use them correctly. It would seem that such an ideal practical skill exercise has advantages, but it also has drawbacks. As an interpreter, I have to do translation exercises frequently, both as a part of the curriculum and as a part of my translation practice. I have accumulated many comments on the pros and cons of such a common way of learning. Pros. Translation exercises will allow you not only to learn how to express your thoughts in a foreign language in a proper way and to memorize grammatical rules, but also help you to enrich your vocabulary. After all, it is the words, phrases, and word combinations that are learned from translation exercises, not only quickly memorized, but also more quickly remembered during live communication. That is, by doing the exercises, you not only memorize new words, but also learn to use them correctly. Cons. Although the fruit of translation exercises is sweet, but poisonous. For beginners who learn a language almost from scratch, translation exercises may discourage them from learning it. They will find such exercises very complicated. How can this be translated? I can't say it like that. I don't know the language well enough to translate that. All of the above embarrassments are just tip of iceberg. The downsides of these exercises is that they force us to engage in translating our thoughts. That is, instead of using ready-made phrases in conversation, we waste the energy translating them. Not only does it take time to say the phrase, but it also slows down the flow of thought, preventing us from focusing on what we want to express. After all, the key is that when we speak, we are not only translating our thoughts, but expressing them using ready-made speech patterns in the way we are used to hearing them from others. Truly, this is so, but trying to translate a thought is a double effort. The ability to speak is the ability to express your thought, not to translate it. Remember this formula and you will not only change your attitude towards the incredible ability to speak, but you will even acquire this gift. Why else? Would you learn ready-made phrases if instead of firing them off, you would reinvent them through translation? Remember, you are not an interpreter who, unlike you, is imposed on the text of the speech by the original. In addition, an interpreter requires special professional knowledge, skills and abilities such as stylistic design of speech, impeccable knowledge of grammar, the ability to switch thoughts from native to foreign language, and most importantly, skills of interpretation. Agree, such skills for a simple communication with a foreigner about the weather is not required. Well, if you are an interpreter and you don't have enough skills for a simple casual conversation, I strongly advise you to communicate more with native speakers. Perhaps you are just shy and you should explore your potential and apply your knowledge in a live practice. Even if your knowledge of vocabulary or grammar is poor, 
even if you have not learned everything in college or university, even if you are still studying, try to speak as often as possible, and thus you will be able to understand foreign speech fluently. After all, it's much better than screwing up right in the process of interpreting. So, let's summarize. Translation exercises are best used at advanced stages of language learning, or when you want to master some grammatical rule but you are unable to do so. Simple advice, don't obsess over translation, because there is also live communication, which will teach you how to speak intuitively. Chapter 3. Language Learning Practices With languages, you are at home anywhere. Edward de Waal. Key Tips In this section, we will move directly to the language practice itself. I would like to offer you practical tips on language learning as well as recommendations on how to organize lessons and how to choose study materials depending on your level of language proficiency. If you have set yourself the goal of learning a language, you should practice it regularly, preferably at least half an hour every day. It's desirable to study on weekends, but don't overdo it. Try to have one day off from studying at least once a week. Otherwise, learning a new language may discourage you. If you don't have enough time to study every day, try to practice at least every other day. Don't study hard if you don't want to. Try to motivate yourself. Try to think all about all the positive aspects and advantages you will have when you learn the language. As I said before, no motivation, no success. Start your classes in a fun and relaxed way. Try to get satisfaction every time you listen to foreign speech, watch movies, memorize every new word, and even do boring exercises. I assure you, those who practice the language through reluctance did not make progress. All you need when you start practicing is a personal mood and a thirst for knowledge. As you may remember, the fundamental approach to a language is to learn it. No matter how it sounds, the word learn always causes rejection, accompanied by the phrases, that's how much I have to learn, I don't have time for that, or I urgently need to learn a language but my memory is poor. Let's go through them one by one. So let's say you are practicing a foreign language and you are currently focused on the topic about yourself. You enrich your vocabulary on the topic, then start memorizing the related vocabulary material. Try to learn a text first, a dozen phrases on the topic, a dialogue, and so on. If you feel that the learned phrases help you directly in live communication and you can skillfully use them, continue in the same way. If you struggle to learn the lexical material or if you don't know how to use it in practice, try other methods of language learning described in Chapter 2. There are plenty of them for every taste. Don't force yourself to learn something you don't comprehend or don't understand. No matter how you struggle, keep learning the language, repeat the previous lessons, rules, words, expressions, do the exercises again, and then start memorizing our favorite topics and dialects again. You will see that learning new material will become a more rewarding endeavor. Since we are talking about memorizing dialects, listening to them will be of a great benefit to you. First, when you listen to a dialect, you will memorize by ear at least 60% of the information after repeated listening. Secondly, if you listen to the same dialect and repeat it after the speaker, the audition of speech will turn into a product of your thoughts, as if you are the author of the dialect, and it will not be difficult to learn it. Try it and you will be convinced. This method of memorizing dialects, phrases, and text will surely please you. And since memorizing material becomes easy, is it difficult to learn a language? Our task is to avoid any difficulties, turning the process of language learning into a fascinating, interesting, and enjoyable pastime. Now let's try to determine your stage of language learning based on your language level. Accordingly, the learning materials described in the second chapter will be recommended. I see the whole process of foreign language learning from the very beginning to its perfection as three main stages. Stage 1. Beginner A1. The student is just starting to learn a foreign language that is completely foreign to him or her. The first thing to be learned is the phonetic system of the language, the rules of pronunciation and reading. Elementary colloquial phrases are memorized. At this stage, 
flirting, it's critical to use audio accompaniment for any new sounds, words, phrases, dialects, and text. Self-teaching learners are encouraged to take multimedia courses, which will help to improve pronunciation and select the most appropriate exercises depending on the pace of learning new materials, as well as self-study textbooks, which explain the rules with practical examples of their use are most simply possible. Educational adapted videos and audio recordings of dialects that allow you to learn elementary communication skills are also suitable. Stage 2. Intermediate. A2. The student familiarizes himself or herself with elementary grammar rules and reaches the vocabulary and learns to build sentences independently using modal dialects and small topical texts. At this stage of learning, there is no need to immerse the student in detailed cases of applying the rules and no need to cover as many grammatical issues as possible. The rules will not be learned at this stage. It's important to teach the student to practically apply elementary grammatical rules in building sentences using the minimum amount of words learned. As a practice of communication, it is worth starting to engage in pen-pal correspondence with a foreigner as well as practicing communication on uh, common topics with the teacher. Self-teaching learners are recommended self-study textbooks, which explain the basic rules in simple language. You can also use video materials with a lower degree of adaptation and start searching for pen pals on the internet. It is desirable to start learning small dialects and thematic text. Listening to adapted audiobooks is recommended as audio materials. Stage 3. Advanced B1, B2. The student begins to master the skills of live speech communication and translation, and at a later stage professional and business communication skills. At this stage of studying, when a sufficient number of the most frequently used words and expressions on various topics have been learned, and most of the grammar topics have been mastered, you can proceed to direct communication with a native speaker on daily and professional topics. An effective way to consolidate the learned vocabulary and grammar of the language is to do translation exercises. Self-teaching learners are recommended to watch movies in the regional. As audio materials, you can listen to foreign radio stations, podcasts, and audiobooks in the regional. To enrich vocabulary, you can use topical reference uh, dictionaries. Professional terms and expressions can be learned from business working documentation or a specialized language course. To master a more complex level of grammatical rules, grammar reference books can be used. Since one of the book's objectives is to teach you how to speak the language you are learning, it's important at all stages of learning to try to organize the lessons as follows. Listen to audio recordings, watch videos in a foreign language, speak a foreign language as often as possible. Whenever you are practicing, remember to watch movies and TV series in a foreign language. At the initial stage of learning, you can listen to special educational audio recordings and watch adapted videos. At a more advanced stage, listen to audiobooks in the original and watch movies without translation, optional with subtitles. Read about how to select your study material and audio and video courses in Chapter 2. On only what you can always carry with you. No languages, no countries, and no people. Let your memory be your travel bag. Alexander Solzhenitsyn Defining the goal of language learning Do you lack the desire to learn a foreign language? Are you convinced that it is simply impossible to learn a language in a short time? Are you sure that you know the language perfectly? I'm often asked for advice in learning a language. Everyone states the problem in different ways. I want to learn English quickly, or I want to learn the language. What do I need? This kind of problem statement reminds me of a joke. Patient, what are you complaining about? Doctor, I'm in pain, what should I do? And what exactly hurts you? I told you everything. Many people want to learn a language without too much effort, and some without even making any. Others rely on omnipotent uh, teachers and almighty teaching methods in the courses. All have the same goal, to learn a language. What does it mean to learn a language? Everyone has a different way of thinking about it. Language, as a concept, is a very broad one, just like the concept of health. Many people feel healthy when they have no fever and no pain in the body.
Others feel sick and miserable even at the slightest nausea. The situation is the same with the languages. Those who feel that they have mastered the language can speak comfortably. But this feeling is not always true. Many graduates with economic and management backgrounds who studied English with excellent marks at institutes and schools found jobs. Of course, they were hired with knowledge of English because it is valued in any profession. As for spoken English, the candidates had no problems with it. But when it came to drafting business letters, contracts, and translation of legal documentation, here, to tell the truth, many failed. And why did this happen? The students knew English quite well and communicated with foreigners fairly calmly. But when it came to the specifics of the business sphere, it began to hit a snack. Language is used in a variety of human spheres of activity with a lot of cases of using words, the meaning of which in the business sphere gains a completely different meaning than in the everyday life. A specialist working in this or that sphere, knowing the language, must know what words are used in this particular area of business. To recognize such specific words by sight, one needs work experience involving the use of such a type of language. I recently had an opportunity to work as an interpreter at a medical center after graduating from college with honors. My job as a language mediator was to help the Tibetan healer and the patient communicate. It was while working as an interpreter that I learned all the peculiarities of language skills in the medical field. As an interpreter, it is not new to me to learn the peculiarities of completely different spheres of human life. After working for Rick, I was familiar with almost all kinds of diseases and human organs, learned the peculiarities of Tibetan medicine, and easily translated the complaints of patients. I don't think it's necessary to explain how voluminous the sphere of medicine is. By the way, I would like to point out that many patients knew English, but no one was able to talk about their illnesses and problems in a fluent manner. Adaptability and the ability to quickly navigate in a working language environment are professional skills for an interpreter. But as it happens, many companies like to save money on interpreters, and what I resent most of all are the callous answers of managers. Why should we hire an interpreter? We have a receptionist who studied English at the Institute. If the company does not care about its image and the impression it could make on foreign partners, not to mention mutual understanding, so be it. Let them do without an interpreter. I will not burden you anymore with the problems of the profession of interpreter, but we'll go directly to the practice itself. What about if you have enough knowledge and experience in the field itself, but not enough language skills? Again, you need to learn a language in a couple of weeks. Where do you start? Even if you think logically, learning a language in a couple of weeks or even a month is unthinkable. Therefore, I recommend you narrow down the scope within which you could get a minimum of linguistic knowledge for the chosen goal. One person needs language skills for a business trip, another to catch up with school curriculum, a third needs to be able to write business letters, someone to translate instructions, and some in general to impress with a couple of beautiful phrases demonstrating elegance. As you can see, the scope of language learning is different for everyone. That is why I strongly recommend that you should, as objectively as possible, estimate your level of knowledge, which you need to attain within a certain period, and select learning materials accordingly, along with the developing a schedule of regular classes. Defining a language learning goal is also necessary to save time. Focus your efforts on achieving the desired outcome, and most importantly, make your lessons efficient. Let's say you work with the business documentation you have to write and receive letters frequently. Over time, you become dissatisfied. You feel frustrated because you learned English very well at school and institute, but now you can't understand what the letter is about and can't answer it. You start to feel that you are a fool, that you learned English for nothing, and you realize that you need to change something, think about what courses to take and how to improve your English. Don't despair, you know English ring perfectly well. Of course you can, talk to other foreigners about your family, your hobbies and your habits. You seem to talk freely and at ease, but when it comes to business writing, this is where the difficulties begin. Don't be discouraged. 
It's just uh, that when you were learning the language, you didn't consider its use in a particular field, and therefore you are not familiar with its vocabulary, stylistics, and special expressions. When working in a particular field, try to memorize more of the unfamiliar words, phrases, and expressions that you encounter in your work, and over time you will achieve mastery of the language in your niche. Be sure to purchase specialized courses to assist you in your language work. There are English, French, Spanish, German, and other language textbooks designed to learn a highly specialized language in a particular field. Typically, they are called English for businessmen, French for doctors, Spanish for journalists, German for lawyers, etc. These textbooks provide samples of working materials in a foreign language and extensively explain the vocabulary with its practical application. Fans of business documentation will find in these books, for example, samples of letters, contracts, business conversations, and much more. People, especially business people, are always faced with a factor of time and desperation. Let's say you need to go on a business trip abroad. Agree. Having three months for training and knowing all new phrases, hello and how are you, would be pointless to spend time, for example, practicing pronunciation or parsing of tenses, practicing at the same time, go to the blackboard or I go to school. Moreover, if you are on deadline and a trip to an imminent language environment is approaching, it's pointless to mindlessly learn grammar and spend time practicing it. In this section, focus on vocabulary, namely memorizing the necessary phrases, collocations, and words. A phrasebook will be invaluable in your preparation. If you are not familiar with pronunciation, try to listen to more audio recordings and get used to foreign speech while watching educational videos and movies in the original. Believe me, vocabulary is much more useful than theoretical grammar rules. Besides business people, businessmen, there are also ordinary employees and office clerks who recognize that the routine of office life deprives them of the opportunity and the desire for personal development and sometimes even professional development. Not everyone has time to do exercises to master the material while at work. And I'm not even talking about the impossibility of listening to audio texts. Not everybody has the desire and strength to study after work. Many feel like a squeezed lemon after it. But still, to make sure that the day is not wasted and rest after work could be combined with study on the principle of enjoyable with the useful, you can watch news broadcasts or a movie in a foreign language. And if you have enough strength, you can read a book. I recommend doing this in an even simpler way. You can open the YouTube video portal and find your favorite shows in a foreign language. Don't forget to learn the words you write out. Taking in my vocabulary book with me to work, I managed to learn 1500 words in a month. That's about as much as you can learn in three months by devoting half an hour a day to the language. Indeed, words are like bricks in our language citadel, and you need to take your work with them seriously. Write out each new word in a notebook vocabulary and number it. Thus, having written out and learned, let's say, 1,000 words, you will feel how easy it became to learn the language. To communicate fluently in a foreign language, it is enough to know 5,000 words and to master it perfectly, around 12,000 words. Therefore, when you read a new text or study a new conversational topic, do not be lazy to write out new words. After all, the more words you know, the easier it will be to express yourself. Of course, I can agree that sometimes when you came across new words, you may not remember them. Uh, sometimes you look in the dictionary, find the translation and forget it. Do not fool yourself, because no matter how it is, the words will come across again and again, thus discouraging you from learning the language. You will think about how many new words you will come across, making it impossible to learn the language. Put those negative thoughts aside and move forward. Before every new lesson, do a short review of the written words as follows. First, close the meaning of words in Russian, remember their translation, and then check the translation of the words. 
After that, close the meaning of the words in the foreign language, recall the translation in Russian, and then check the meaning of the words. Repeat this procedure for three or four times before class. Do not try to memorize all the words in one bite. You will not memorize them anyway, as they still have to settle in your head. Many people find memorizing words an unthankful challenge. Either they are difficult to memorize or they are quickly forgotten. Therefore, initially, when you try to memorize a certain word, try to use all your wealth of imagination. Create associations of words with objects or with words similar in sound in your native language. As an option for memorizing new words, I recommend writing them on uh, post-its, in some cases together with expressions. All those stickers, notes with words and expressions that you cannot memorize the first time, stick them in the most visible places. If you often work at the computer, stick them on the monitor. Download the translator app on your smartphone. Now, when you see or hear an unfamiliar foreign word, you will always know how it is translated. No matter where you are, your smartphone is always at your fingertips. And one more tip. If you manage to listen to music at work, you can listen to audio courses with headphones instead. In this case, I recommend an audio material where each phrase of the speaker is followed by the translation. Listening to phrases with translation, the time to learn new expressions and speech patterns will be reduced by three times. In a month of work, you can listen to the whole audio course. So, by practicing the language even half an hour a day at work, after or before work, you can do well in learning languages. Think about it. As a rule, any employee whose job is unthinkable without knowledge of a foreign language will find time to study on their own or take an evening class. There is also a way for people who are very busy or too lazy. Since we consider memorizing um, words and audio recordings in the context of the best ways to learn a language while saving working time, I advise you to take as a rule to study 10 words every working day and on the way to work or during work to listen to audio courses instead of music. Thus, you can learn about 3,600 words in a year and study one audio course per month. One audio course allows you to learn more than 200 useful phrases and expressions by listening. Is this a poor result with a minimum of time and effort for lessons? There are times when, after years of working with business language and documentation, technical English is just fine. But when it comes to simple topics of family or vacation, you do not even know what to say, as if your brain was abruptly formatted. In this case, it is advisable to start studying the general vocabulary of the spoken segment, learn as many colloquial words and, most importantly, expressions as possible, watch movies and listen to audio recordings more often. It even happens that a person has a huge stock of words, both technical and colloquial, but he or she cannot make a complete thought out of them. System administrators or software engineers are a striking example of this. They often have to work with technical documentation in English and go on business trips abroad, but their knowledge of the language is relatively poor. Why relatively? So it is because they know frequently used colloquial words. They seem to have a great understanding of technical foreign literature, but as they tell me, what's the use of a language vocabulary of words? I cannot link them with each other. It is at this stage that you need to learn grammatical rules and to do translation exercises to practice them. Alternatively, I recommend learning ready-made phrases, dialects, or topic text. Speaking of gaps in grammar knowledge, I believe that at the level of everyday communication, these gaps are not that significant. I was surprised when being with my brother in the Emirates. He managed to communicate quite well with Englishmen, who, despite his exotic proficiency in the language, considered him a good interlocutor. Isn't that progress, my friends? After that, think about what is more important, to know words or to be able to link them correctly. I mean, to know grammar. Here you have a clear example showing that knowledge of grammar is not always essential, but knowledge of words is crucial. 
For some people, however, it's a personal choice to know or not to know grammar. It just depends on how satisfied the learner is with his or her spoken language. So, ladies and gentlemen, who are dissatisfied with their language skills, don't be unhappy. Don't punish yourself for not knowing the language well enough. Try to focus on your weaknesses, on what you would like to change, maybe even your attitude towards yourself, and on what you would like to achieve by studying or learning a foreign language. The objectives of the way to the goal are clear. All you need is your motivation, desire to become better, and faith in success. Let language learning be your hobby or favorite pastime. And then you will always have the desire and time to learn it. Learning is a treasure that will follow its owner everywhere. Chinese proverb. No motivation, no success. Since the purpose of my book is to teach people to talk, I suggest articulating the reasons why many people can't talk and the proposing solutions to this problem. Remember, no one can teach you how to speak but yourself. No matter how it may sound, it's true. Even if you know a significant number of dialects and topics and have a vast vocabulary, but you don't want to feel embarrassed or to speak by yourself, your effort will be in vain. The fundamental principle for learning a language is your motivation. Let me cite an example. After hearing about my success in learning languages, my mother's friend offered me to study English with her daughter and set me a goal, not just to improve her knowledge of English, but to teach her to speak. Well, having developed a good technique for learning the spoken language, I decided to try my hand. The lessons were fruitful, the student grasped everything on the fly, but when it came to conversational practice, there was no progress. When I brought up a topic on which she needed to keep up a conversation in a foreign language, even on a learned topic, my student kept silent and smiled. It was nothing but shyness. After all, she had learned the topic text and narrated it to me without mistakes, but failed to practice the dialogue. Whenever I allowed her to speak on her own and uh, form a phrase on her own, the outcome was the same. This can be explained by the fact that a diligent 10th grade student who was used to studying the language according to the school curriculum, if they give me an exercise, I will do it. If they ask me to learn it, I will learn it. Uh, did not try or did not want to go beyond what she had learned and move to conversational practice on her own. It seems to me that one of the main components of the language barrier is, roughly speaking, the inferiority of the learners. Just like in the expression, the rescue of a drawing man is the drawing man's job. Hence, we can conclude that if you learn a language forcefully and you have no motivation or desire for it, you do not know what you are learning it for, and all your endeavors will come to nothing. To master a language, you need to be open and receptive to everything new, and then your success will flourish. The main thing is not to feel embarrassed to speak, even if it's wrong. Indeed, after hard language lessons with a tutor and on courses, when it seems that there are no unknown words, basic grammar rules are passed, and many texts and dialects are learned, the problem of learning to speak is still there. It would seem that nothing will spoil your mood, but suddenly on the way home you come across a man with a map in his hands who calls you in an inarticulate voice and says, uh, do you speak English? Of course you answer, yes, I do. And then the most interesting thing starts. Several phrases are thrown in your direction at once. You try to ask again, then you understand the repeated phrase and you try to prepare an answer. You think for a long time about how to find the right word, in the meantime trying to understand what he still says to you, and you unintentionally think about how you look from the outside. If you're perplexed, you don't know what to say, uh, it's as if you were caught off guard. After a few moments of understanding the essence of the problem, looking at the shown place on the map, you eventually explain the location to the foreigner and hear gratitude for your help. Interesting situation. It seemed that we have been studying the topic in the course and doing the necessary exercises. But where is the trap? It's simple. Most often we practice the language in exercises that we have enough time to do. 
It takes us about one minute to think about a sentence and accurately phrase its translation, or to answer a question in a text, whereas in live speech we have no more than three to four seconds to do so. If you want to answer and speak instantly, take a pen and paper and write these questions and answers at a glance, in your native language without thinking, and then imagine how you would phrase them in English. Write out translation opposite each sentence. Practice this way a couple of times a day, and you will not only have a good response, but you will not fall into a stupor and will know what to say. Now, as for understanding foreign speech. In the example above, the course student did not immediately understand the foreigner's speech, because he needed to get used to the speech. For this purpose, during classes, it's necessary to use soundtracks more often. Whenever possible, always try to communicate in the studied language. As I mentioned above, even when you are in a language environment, it's important not to be silent. If you have already taken a basic course, for example in English, then when you meet an Englishman at a resort or, let's say, in the city, do not miss the opportunity to start a conversation, to help because no one will break your language barrier but you. Let your English be broken. Don't think about how to express a thought correctly. Don't cringe at your pronunciation. Just speak. For your comfort, remember that English is not your native language, but a foreign one. And for a native speaker, it is his native language and the only one he knows. That is, it turns out that you know two languages at once and your foreign partner knows one. So which of you in this situation is on top? If you have found yourself in a situation where you have to learn a language on your own, for example Spanish, you don't attend uh, courses because you don't see the point in them, you don't have uh, anyone to talk to, you can organize a small homemade practice using the materials and techniques of language learning that I wrote about in the previous chapter. If you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his language, that uh, goes to his heart. Nelson Mandela. Practicing live communication. Now let's move on to looking at the ability to speak itself. At the end of this chapter, I will give you some useful tips on how not to get lost in a live conversation with a foreigner. If you have a good vocabulary, a bunch of ready-made phrases and knowledge of communication etiquette, you can try to start a conversation with a native speaker. For the first uh, acquaintance, it is desirable to prepare general information about yourself, how long and for what purposes you are learning the language. There is nothing wrong with the fact that you are practicing the language. Even on the contrary, the native speaker will be very pleased that you want to master his or her native language and will consider it for respect. Indeed, it's nice when a German or an Englishman addresses you in Russian, even when you approach him in English or German. Don't you have respect for such people? So the conversation has started. Don't worry, try to keep it going, even if you don't understand everything. Ask follow-up questions and talk more about yourself. Thus, by clarifying questions, you will better understand the essence of what the other person is saying. You will understand what he is talking about and what meaning he wants to convey to you. And speaking about yourself, you kind of allow the interlocutor to ask questions to you and uh, not you to him. It will prevent ridiculous mistakes in misunderstanding each other. You speak a language when you think in it. Try talking aloud in a foreign language. First, with yourself. If you are in solitude, no one will laugh at you. No one will point fingers at you. And this is where you can practice your language. Try to describe the objects around you. If the vocabulary does not allow you to do so, you can look in a dictionary. If there is no dictionary at hand, then try to speak using the available stock of words, knowledge and background information. As an alternative option, remember what you learned in the last lesson and try to imagine yourself in the same situation as the protagonist of the dialogue or narrator of the topical text, using the words and expressions learned at that moment. Success will exceed your expectations. The main thing is more creativity and imagination. If you want to say something but you are short of words, try to play up your thoughts. For example, you want to say, 
if you try to translate such a thought verbatim or even word for word into another language, you will collapse. And I'll try to rephrase the same Russian sentence under the norms of the syntax of the target language. Subject, predicate, object, adverbial. Making it look like this. Мой брат – системный администратор. Or, мой брат – компьютерщик. Based on this example, this is why I describe the pros and cons of translation exercises. If you find it quite difficult to express your thoughts in a foreign language, simply reconsider your speech communication technique and the way you formulate your sentences. For example, if you are accustomed to using ornate, complex and compound expressions when speaking in your native Russian language, it does not mean that you have to make sentences in foreign language in the same way. Why not break complex sentences, thoughts, into several simple ones? Stylistic words with a higher style can be replaced with synonyms of the usual colloquial style, as instead of searching for a translation of the word possess, you can replace it with the simple word have. Or, as in the example above, if you are not familiar with the word system administrator, you can replace it with the simple word computer engineer or even more elementary specialist. By the way, about mistakes in speech communication. At the initial stage, it's better not to think about it, but to try to speak, even if it's wrong. The correctness of speech construction will work itself. Comprehending the logic of expressing thoughts, mastering all the subtleties of syntax and contextual use of words. I think it's quite wrong when teachers interrupt their students for the slightest mistake in sentence forming and word uh, pronunciation, knocking them off their thoughts and uh, discouraging them from speaking. This is tactless, at the very least. You should also take into account the fact that your ears are not used to foreign speech enough. That is why I advise you to use audio material when practicing the language. Listening is a problem for many people, while the skill of oral perception of speech is developed only in practice. Therefore, for those who do not understand speech well, I advise not to listen to every single word, but to understand the meaning of the whole phrase by two or three words. Sometimes you can guess the meaning of what your companion says by nonverbal means of communication, gestures, facial expressions, etc. So, in the process of live communication, first, don't worry. Second, don't try to understand every single word, but try to guess what the speaker is talking about. Third, don't try to translate your thoughts word for word. Fourth, if you don't know how to say a phrase, rephrase it or change your thought process altogether. Fifth, if you don't understand something, do not hesitate to ask your partner to repeat a phrase or write it down. This is how I see the process of getting over the language barrier. There will be only slight side effects, a little embarrassment, a little excitement, a little anxiety and uncertainty. As a result, there will be accomplished speech communication and mutual understanding. It is like the proverb, it's either well begun is half done or the first fry is bound to be a washout. Important! All the above mentioned inconveniences should be addressed at an early stage of language learning and then your speaking skills will improve with each new conversation and gradually you will learn to speak easily and fluently. Do you know what a foreign accent is? It's a sign of bravery. Amy Chua Postface my book is coming to an end. I hope that its readers have learned many useful tips and are ready to start learning languages with renewed vigor. Those who find my book tedious with its many rhetorical questions can simply flip through it, noting the balded advice. There is a perception that it takes a lifetime to learn a language perfectly. And this is true. A professional interpreter or linguist needs to constantly learn and practice the language like an athlete who needs to stay fit and exercise regularly. And if you are a simple employee of a company and you have a completely different profession not related to linguistics and translation studies, it will be enough for you to just take a vocational course in a foreign language and relax. Your desire to perfect yourself in this case depends on the degree of your aspirations. There are enough moments in life when uh, there come creative breaks because of some pleasant and unpleasant events in life. 
Even more often, there is either no need to study foreign languages or there is a feeling of disappointment and unjustified efforts. It is all natural. We are all human beings. If resuming classes has become a priority for you, but you have no desire to do so, try to find the strengths and reread at least the third chapter of the book, and it is quite likely that you will take up studying or learning a foreign language again. Having read to the end of the post phase and closed my book, on its back cover you will see some varied pictures. This is my author's summarizing map of the main language learning methods described in the second chapter. So, whoever is too lazy to even flip through the book can analyze it and choose the most enjoyable way to learn a language. This is where your humble servant bids you farewell, but remains at your disposal for any suggestions, remarks, or comments on the content of the book, which you can send to my email address. Good luck learning languages!